Morning meeting. Should I start with some sort of inspirational quote? I think we, I think we could use that. Okay. Uh, you don't need to see the whole staircase to take the first step. Martin Luther King Jr. Nah. It's just MLK Day. I kind of want I kind of want to see the whole staircase. I want to know where I'm going. What if that top step's missing and you can't get up all the way? Not sure. All right. Well. Uh, all right. Now it's your turn. What so we got? we're gonna use that same metaphor and we're gonna put it to the adorned stone because we're gonna go one piece of stone at a time. Um, yeah, we got the outside of the fireplace that okay. can get pretty much 90% completed. We got the kitchen that can get 100% completed. Okay. Um, we got a lot of boxes of adorned stone. Five pallets. Five pallets. It's like four and a half. So we can probably get two people on each side of the corner of the adorned stone and two people on the fireplace. Um, I'm gonna be a little out of pocket. I'm gonna do a little miscellaneous work. I got this fireplace vent we gotta get through the roof. We gotta build a wall around it. Okay. Yeah. You I think working? Cool. Me? Oh yeah. Big you time. working? Got my best got my best team on it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh and then I guess for uh rest of the week. Oh we'll, you do rest of the week as well? Yeah. All we'll right. uh we'll have the adornstone pretty much done. Yep. I know we need to wait on like yeah, a couple ceiling, pieces at the top the for the material. ceiling material to get in there. Then we can screen we'll have to plane this uh main deck. deck. We can screen, screen on it? top of it and then Why do are we our screening deck. It? Well We'll tell you. Uh, we'll tell you in a bit. I gotta uh, watch the vlog. You gotta watch the vlog. Right. And then uh, we can do decking there. And yep. then I think uh, hopefully before the end of the week, you can start working on those columns. Oh, columns, yeah, we can get columns updated. All right. Good goal. One, two, three. Premier outdoor living. We'll work on that next time. All right, let's go. Yeah. Creating a bit of a shelf yeah. situation or something? Yeah. Don't like a the reverse way that shelf. Looks. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I think what we should do, I'm going to shave off the corner of this. Okay. So it lays, it'll lay flat. It'll accommodate that little corner. Okay. And then we have the color kit, so we'll just color correct it. Color kit. Okay. You think that's good? I think so. You know uh, what it's worth? What's that? You know what it's worth? Worth a shot. Oh, it's worth a shot. Yeah. It's just an idea. It's just an idea. Something to think try. about. Uh, I think you just hit it with the demo saw and then maybe use your hammer, hammer claw. And just, you know. I don't need you to micromanage me in this. I think I got it. You need me to nano. You. <laughs> you need me to nano manage. Okay. Okay, bye. Let's go. A team, getting after it. Problems come up, solutions also. Gotta love depends. it. You know what my natural instinct right now is? Still micromanage. Quite literally perfection. It's art, I would say. It sounds uh, like that's exactly what you were trying to do. Do your own one. So good job. So we have our kitchen framed all out of pro wood, pressure treated lumber. We also have pro wood plywood, pressure treated plywood. Then we have a layer of house wrap and then a layer of 30 pound felt. So you want two weather resistant barriers, WRBs on your facade here before you do the adorn stone and you want to do the 30 pound felt second because if there are any tiny little gaps it's black so you won't see it and then as you go up see how we just have the flange on here you want to make sure you got a fully threaded screw you want to try to get some of these into studs but they don't all have to be but since it's just going into half inch plywood we want these threads up at the top to be grabbing
existing house had a fireplace that's gonna be in our addition. Um, they just vented it out back of the wall. And then if we went about finishing it with our UFP edge and everything, you would have this big ugly vent. So we took the initiative to vent it through the roof. And this is what we ended up with. So they just gave us a standard roof boot that you wanna make sure you install it like water, think like water, so it's underneath the shingles. The shingles are overlapped the correct way. If any water gets on this metal, it's still on top of the shingles and can flow down the roof. They called for a minimum of 12 inches from our roof to our collar, which were about 14, 13 inches. And other than that, it just calls for some, you know, silicone around this collar, a little roof cement around the back. I'd say she's flashed in. Now downstairs, that bump out we have, we can frame this pipe in and then completely finish it off and you'll never know it was there. Much better. Eh. What? <laughs> Did you know that uh, the people that live in Dubai don't like the Flintstones, but the people of Abu Dhabi do? <laughs> you get it? to the point of this project where all of the details are starting to come together and this is usually the part that makes me freak out a little bit my ADHD brain is all over the place as it is and now we have all of these little things coming together which is sometimes hard for me to manage so on this one we tried to be really diligent about going in order and making sure that we finish each task before we move to the next one so we're not left with a million things hanging on at the end that we have to finish up one of the things in particular is we usually wait till the very end of the project to put in all of the plugs around all of the decking and our skirt boards and it'll take an entire day if you're doing it just at the end. We also made sure to coordinate our deliveries on this one ahead of time so that all of the materials that we're gonna use are here at least a couple days or a week before we need it because that can lead to jumping to the next thing because you don't have that one piece that you need and that always creates a whole bunch of extra work at the end when you have to go back and nitpick all of these little details. So we're trying to avoid that here. I think we're doing a really good job, better than we typically do, and uh, it's leading to a lot less stress for me, which is always a plus. This has been just uh, thoughts from me, Sean. All right, we got as much of this Dornstone done as we can. We're gonna wait for the final row until the countertop gets installed so that we can come up flush with that in case they have to shim it or anything. Let's show you the transitions. We like to have the Dornstone transition really nice and clean. So we've got this piece of tundra running up. It's overhanging about two and a half inches. Then our stone on the side can just butt right into it. And you know, there's not a weird transition from a door stone into the decorators, which we like to do across the whole front because you can see it gives it that nice flat surface for our appliances to go on. Same thing with the fireplace, exterior wall, just about done with that. We have to wait uh, to finish the last little section until we get the soffit material up in there. But and what are we working on now? We're gonna work on flattening this deck out. I'm gonna buzz around this deck. How big is this? Uh, about 19 by 26. 19 by 26. I'm gonna buzz around this deck with my trusty planer, a six foot level. And I'm gonna go around and check for any high spots. Key thing that you guys wanna do is what we do is we grade our lumber before we install it. So we'll pick through, we'll measure the widths of them and we'll start with our tallest ones. Let's just say they're nine and five eighths. And then we'll lay them down to our smallest ones. Let's just say it's nine and three eighths. They don't have any like nine and three eighths, nine and five eighths, nine and three eighths. It'll all be running on an even plane. It makes it a lot easier. You don't want to build a piano. You don't want to go crazy. Clean it a little bit, but you don't want to chase. That's pretty much it. So just to be clear, we're not building a piano. Mm -mm. Okay, perfect. Because <laughs> I wasn't planning on that. All right, cool. You got any other tips for us? Not really. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Well, enjoy the time lapse of him doing this. We 
our decking going down in our screen porch area, the main deck, dance floor going down. And we're doing a layer of screen over top of our joists under the decking so that bugs can't come from underneath. There's only a little gap in between the boards, but bugs are small, so they can just come right up, so we don't want that. Something that we haven't mentioned about this project, you're probably wondering what kind of screening is gonna be around the outside of this. Well, we're doing motorized screens, so there's gonna be three separate motorized screen panels that will be able to go down, just like bzzz, and then go back up like bzzz. It's gonna be pretty sick, so when they have them down, we wanna make sure that bugs aren't coming up through the bottom, and uh, pretty easy to do. Roll this out over top of your joist. Just make sure that you don't step in between the joist once the screen's down because you'll fall through. It can be kind of a trick on the eye. And that's pretty much it. So we'll get this down. Then we can cut in our borders and hopefully we are getting our UFP edge delivery today so we can start on this ceiling. We'll see. It's really starting to come down. So uh, I'm gonna let the guys stay up on the deck underneath the warm, you know, roof thing. Got some ponchos this morning. Sometimes you gotta lead by example. Oh, weird. Look at the sign. Tip time with Tony. We all know what this is. This is a carpenter's pencil. The reason they call it a carpenter's pencil is because carpenters use it. But it's also a portable table saw. Check this out. Drop your saw, slap your pencil, hold it tight. Straight as eggs, the more you know. We've got our decking down on the main deck, screened in, locked in for justice. We've got our fireplace insert set in the opening, and now we are on to the ceiling, which I am super excited about. We've got the UFP Edge vertical grain hemlock going on the ceiling. I'm super excited about this. It looks amazing. It looks beautiful. But you're gonna have to wait for the next vlog for us to get to this installation and get the ceiling hemlocked in for justice. So make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned. And until next time, this is Premier Outdoor Living.